Chapter 1 The Creation Begin all acts and thinking by using al Kalum the All. Tablet 2 The Beginning 19 times 6 equals 114. Lo, in the very beginning was the Word. Existence was this Word, and creation came afterwards. Nothing would exist if Anu Elion Elion El didn't create it. In order for Anu to create it, he must have existed. If the Christians say that God is the creator of all things, or the Hebrews say that Yahweh is the creator of everything, or the Muslims say that Allah created everything, then Yahweh, Allah or God must have existed, though there's existence before creation. Nothing was created except by way of Allahu Akbar. He, Allah, who originally was known as Anu, and An, was and is and will be the intellect. Intellect, intellectual, lect, lecture, the speaker of the word that existed in the beginning, or simply where things began from hydrogen, on through the elements. Overstanding these points, where things sum up to something and existence predates creation as darkness predates light, as ether before the lightest hydrogen is weighed to have a sum and from ether on into triple darkness. The root of all thinking, that is one, the state of quirks, the first degree of darkness, the first degree of nothingness, two biaps, the second degree of darkness, and three zeals, the third degree of darkness. The weight or the sum of things or other thing pre-weight nothingness yet exists. Knowing these truths is called right knowledge, right wisdom and right understanding. He was not always the green solar light but created himself into a green light to be witnessed of his creation as El Elo. El Rab, sustainer of glory, illuminating the green light of Makael from himself to rule Malakut. So, the green essence of presence was necessary for identity, and that identity was ruler. El Malak, which is the third point in existence, and the third attribute of Allah. 1. El Rahman 2. El Rahamal 3. El Malak Mikael Murdoch, being the highest of all the rabbis of the Yanunagai. The Allahum of the crystal essence, which is the splendor of beauty. Light is a manifestation of energy detectable, not speculated, but calculated. So Anu manifested himself, the unform in form, to be detectable and logged in what's called time and space. And that energy began as a light, a color in light, which is the presence of a sun. And the color green is growth as in life through herbs, vegetation and trees of the land, and algae of the seas. The color green is conceived between the blue sea's water and the color yellow sun rays, the fourth color of the prism, the fourth point in growth or creation, the mental plane. The crystal essence became divided in two parts. One was extremely pure and luminous, however the other appeared to the vision of the intellect to be inferior to the first. The first was called light, the pure green light, the light of the Anunnaki, Sarafut Seraphim, those agreeable beings, or growth. And the second was called fire, the impure amber light, the light of the Anunnaki Garabat, the cherubim, those disagreeable beings, destruction or consumption. Of the first that are to come are the noble and superior individuals, the souls of El Nabiyat, the newsbearers, El Rasulat, the apostles, El Masir, El Hadi, El Mujadad, and the people of the right hand. All agreeable things are created from the green light of the benevolent beings, concealed. The Anunnaki Yahwehin simply called Yah, Sarafat, and did manifest as green, but in time as iron replaced the magnesium molecule in the blood, the pure melanin was lost. Thus from green to rust your color did become. Of the second, the fire, was created the malevolent beings, reveal the Illuminati, which are the Jinn's genie, the disagreeable Anunnaki, the disagreeable Yahwehin, simply called Wei, those who are Garobat, a race of disagreeable Anunnaki who were created before Kadmon Zakar. 
These are the followers of Tarmash of Shrakar, the Luciferian. One third of these beings from Ilyun were cast from their home in the 19th galaxy Ilyun, where the Akasha records of agreeable acts are kept, as opposed to Sejin, where the Azeret records of all disagreeable acts are kept. To make a new home in the Orion star constellation, the disagreeable ones made their homes in Betagles, Rigel and Bellatrix. The Cycles The first cycle was a dot in the universe, then that dot became a line. The line became a wall, the wall became a square. The first dot split like a daughter cell into two. The second dot formed a circle by completing one cycle around itself. No one knows save itself where the circle begins and ends. Then it began to spin to form an orb and thus 360 degrees of square and 360 degrees of circle. The circle was turned inside out and placed within the confines of the square. This was accomplished by first dividing the circle into four parts, geometry was created and dimensions were formed. Geo, Kai and Metri measure. The square that you know on this plane is not the same as its counterparts on the spiritual plane and the plane of force. These planes are not perceived by the ordinary human eye. The energy which was confined in the square tried to escape. It pushed upward and outward and downward. This constant friction created heat to the degree that the square could no longer withstand and an explosion of enormous force occurred. This event had not yet been manifested on the physical plane as the birth of the universe, the formation of stars, galaxies and planets on the physical side. When energy beings manifest atoms, they make up atoms, which then become compounds and elements, as opposed to physical beings atoms who manifest and make up cells, which become organisms and bodies. When the Anunnaki Elohim of 360 degrees splits into two beings of 180 degrees each, meaning the disagreeable is on the outside, if the male child is agreeable, the female twin counterpart is disagreeable. If the female is agreeable, the male twin or counterpart is disagreeable. The one must conquer the other to become agreeable or to become a child of light, imperfection, that was clicked on in the darkness of perfection. In this way was the disagreeable being created, calling them twins. Every person born was a twin. One defeated the other and that is how each of you were born. This is called the concept of survival of the fittest. The concept of survival of the fittest begins from the very moment sperm is ejaculated into the vaginal canal. Each of the sperm cells are ejaculated and races to the ovum or egg of the female to fertilize it and only one of those sperm cells survived the journey beating out all the other sperm cells in their normal birth. Normally conception occurs with one egg released from a woman's ovary is fertilized by one male sperm. Seven out of ten pairs of twins result from the woman releasing two eggs which are then fertilized quite independently by two sperms, fraternal twins. Usually the two eggs then implant and develop separately in the uterus. Less commonly one egg fertilized by one sperm divides, resulting in two developing babies with the same inherited characteristics, identical twins. Often this division occurs after implantation in the uterus. Monozygotic from the word mono, Middle English, from Old French, from Latin, from Greek, from monos meaning single alone, and zygote meaning yoke, which is derived from a single fertilized ovum or embryonic cell mass. This usually happens with identical twins in which it occurs after fertilization and often after implantation in the uterus. As a result, twins almost always share the placenta, although each has its own cord and bag of water. Fraternal births are dizygotic, meaning they have two zygotes, di2 and zygote, which is a cell formed by the union of two Ganymedes, especially a fertilized ovum before cleavage. From Greek, zeuketus, yoke, from zygon, meaning to yoke, derived from two separately fertilized eggs. There are also polyzygotic fraternal twins, from the word poly, Greek polu, from polus, meaning much, many, and again zygote from zygot, which are births that are caused by fertility drugs. They arise from two or more fertilized eggs and may be from either sex. 
Fraternal twins have separate water bags and cords and separate placentas as well. Occasionally the two eggs implant closer together in the uterus so that the placentas become fused and it looks as though the twins are sharing the same one. So each time an agreeable Anunakai was born, whether male or female, his her twin was to be disagreeable. The creation of the Luciferians order or Jin Jini was the end of the first cycle. The beginning of the second cycle was half a diameter of 7,000 years, in which you have what you call the angelic beings, be they agreeable Sarafat or disagreeable Garubat. They, the race of Natas, were cast down to the fourth plane, the mental plane, and made to dwell on the second plane, the plane of force, before their physical form. El Elo, the source, gave them ruling comfort until the end of the second cycle, or the 14,000 year after their creation. At the beginning of the third cycle, which took 7,000 years, you have the disagreeable Wei, Garabat, and the agreeable Yah, Sarafat, both of which are called the Yahwehans or Jehovans, and you also have the process of the Adamites, of the 14 generations before the completion of the Adama project in the laboratory in Sidonia, called Shimti, the Lamahu Mars project, or the Sphinx project. This genetic breeding and splicing, chromosome tampering is that which gave birth to the Kadmon, also called Zakar, and even Adam. These Yahwehan or Jehovans were both personifying in the physical form to come to the planet Earth as physical beings, for there was no place found any more for them in the fourth plane, the heavens. For when the Wayans heard the news of the creation of the Adama project and the prototype that was laid before them, they created much war and mischief in the heavens. This war is recording in the scripture Revelation 12th degree 7th verse as, And there was a war in heaven, Murdoch and his Seraphim fought against the Draco Hilal, and his Garabat, and the Seraphit did win, so there was no place found any more in Oranus Orion for them. And the great Drago, who was Halal, son of Shakar, was cast out, that old reptilian called the Devil, and the serpent which deceived the whole planet Earth. He was cast out into Earth, and his Garabat did personify with him. After that, the Natas began to do disagreeable acts and disobey El Elo, the head Yahweh, the Most High Deity of all deities, the Source, and he condemned them. Natas, also called Lucifer, was an extra being on Terra, or what you would refer to as an extraterrestrial. The Luciferian order came out of a group of extraterrestrial beings called the Yahwehs, sometimes called the Jehovahs. The Luciferians would interfere with the beings on this planet called Earth and pass themselves off as gods. The Luciferians, after taking their independence, were allowed to work with the Yahwehans together at one time to conquer certain portions of the planet. But one such Luciferian named Halal, son of Natas or Shakar, wanted to rule all the stars of the heavens, meaning all the Yahwehs. Leviathan, the serpent people, one of the reptilian seeds, or the Luciferians, have been trying to gain control over this planet for many thousands of Earth years. They are called the Sex Spirit Force, also called Pornay. They are able to seduce and deceive all those with desires on Earth, turning lust into luster, thereby attracting and controlling all with it. As Nakebu was seduced by the Leviathan powers of lust, it is the death of divinity and the birth of morality. That's why the Intergalactic Federation quarantined the planet. If enough entities were looking for freedom from the control of the Luciferians, the Intergalactic Federation would remove these forces from Earth. Yet Hamim's love to lust and lust to love, expressing energy in motion, overexerting their emotions, bringing about their spiritual death. There is a group called the Satanists who are not the same as the Luciferians. Their other names are the Divines or Nakashites or Kanaz. The Satanists are more sadistic than the Luciferians, whose leader was Lucifer, also called Natas, which is simply Satan spelled backwards. They are also called Shayatinium. They have supplanted themselves in every facet of life that you can think of, and now they have you naming yourselves after them. The Satanists seek mind control and dominance 
gods, while the Luciferians seek to control the energies of others. They are best described as vampires who draw energy from others, also called Dracula, Dracos, Dragos, or serpent dragon called Leviathan. These Luciferians are from a planet called Maldek, the 11th planet. This planet called Earth even has Luciferians and Yahwehans, and some of them are disagreeable Alahum. They don't usually work together, however, they will come together if there is a common interest. The Yahwehans were the original 24 elders. There were 12 ex-Luciferians to dissatisfied. The other 12 were the agreeable Deniers. That's why you have 12 satisfied and 12 dissatisfied. Shakar, who is also called Hambaba or Zuen and Tarnish subjected all of them, the Jehovans called Luciferians, to the chastisement of the eternal damnation, except for the weak ones of the family of Allahum. These he has pardoned and has appointed one of them, Halashai, to be their governor and he granted them a new law called religion. It was other than the Wulpu sound right reasoning. When the cycle elapsed, the wicked sons of Shakar or Tarnish blasphemed and committed disagreeable acts because their nature was intended to be recalcitrant or to show defiance. Anu Elion Elion El, the Most High, sent Murdoch, the son of Enki and Damkina, who is called Mikael, and the agreeable beings to admonish them and advise them However, it was in vain. Murdoch was sent because he knew their nature, having been the disagreeable twin of his sister Balat, who was agreeable. So in the beginning of the fourth cycle of 7,000 years, you have Seraphat, Garabat and Hummins, later called humans, be they agreeable or disagreeable. You see, the cycle is broken up into fours. When these disagreeable beings were cast out, one further of them were cast out from the 19th galaxy, Ilion, with Tarnish. Now you have the sun and you have the ten planets. Planets speed up when they get closer to the sun. The ancient Greeks called certain points of light in the skies the planetai or planet, a word that means wandering stars, and named them after their gods Hermes, Aphrodite, Ares, Zeus and Kronos. Instead of using the names of the Greek gods, these planets are now called by the names of the Roman equivalents, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Planets shine by reflected light. The planets in your solar system the captives of your largest star, the Sun. Like the planets, the Earth gives off no light of its own. When a planet shines brightly during the shadow hours, it is reflecting the Sun's light. These ten planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Titan, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, which are your calculations of the planets. However, you shall know the truth. Now let me continue. You have the Sun and you have the planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. Earth is the third planet from the Sun, which is 93 million miles away. And the 93rd attribute of Allah is El Nawar, meaning light. He is called the light of the heaven and the earth, which is the sun, the true light of the heaven and the earth, simply Ra or Ray, said Ray as in the sun's rays. The sun is the light, the 93rd attribute, and the number 93 million miles is the distance, and this is no coincidence. The sun is the bright morning star, which the planet Venus is also known as. Venus is often referred to as a star on account of its dense atmosphere of carbon dioxide, which reflects solar rays radiation and causes a very bright visual effect. The circumference of the planet Earth, which is the circle around it, is 24,896 miles. That varies because, as you know, your planet expands and contracts seasonally. There is a universal equinox and an earthly equinox. Equinox simply being when the length of the day and the shadow hour are equal coming from the Latin aquion optium, aqui, equi, and nox, noct, night. The planet Earth goes around the sun called solar, from the Latin word sol meaning sun, and ar from the Hittite deity arena, goddess of the sun, which is the center of this solar system in 365 Earth days. This varies because the hours in a day are not really 24, but rather 23 hours, 56 minutes and 6 seconds. Seconds. You would calculate this as one day, when in reality it varies. The moon moves around the planet in 354 
birthdays. Again, the moon cycle varies and you call that one lunar year. So now you have this motion of the moon around the planet and your planet around the sun. You have the whole galaxy or solar system, central solar, with systematic bodies moving around it. It moves around a larger mass every 24,000 years. Of course this varies in an equinox. And you have precession of the equator needle. It spins one complete circle every 26,000 year on its axis. Precession is the motion of the axis of a spinning body, such as the wobble of a spinning top. When there is an external force acting on the axis, it's a slow the gyration of Earth's axis around the pole of the elliptic, caused mainly by the gravitational pull of the Sun, Moon and other planets on the Earth's equatorial bulge. From the Latin precessus, precession, from the past particle of procedure, meaning to go before. Your equinox varies from 24,000 to 24,896 years. The planetal Earth positioned itself in the location of the revolution of Earth in the year 1970 which was the end of the third cycle as you know it. The end of the moon cycle of water and the birth of the sun cycle of ether which was also the beginning of this writing which was sent to renew your earth story. Make note there is no such word as their story only history his story which he says of us and mystery my story which we say of us. When the Euro-American is making reference to the story of the original woody-haired beings more they refer to it as history meaning his story and when making reference to their story it's called a mystery my story because they really don't have a beginning in the origin of things be not arrogant of our knowledge take counsel with the ignorant as well as the wise for the limits of knowledge in any field has never been set and no one has ever reached them Wisdom is rarer than emeralds, and yet they are found amongst the women who gather at the grindstones. Be diligent as long as you live. Always do more than is commanded of you. Do not misuse your time while following your heart, for it is offensive to the soul to waste one's time. As you can see, the wise Riskians, the Anunnaki, have made land to equal one mile per year, and the circumference of the planet Earth is 24,896 miles. It takes 24,896 years for that cycle to take place. The wise round the figure off to four cycles of 6,000 years, which you can call one equinox and age. The other year years are in constant speed in movement of the planet, making it right and exact. They the elders have made land one mile to equal each year, of which time is to renew our history or our story. What happens is we have four cycles of 6,000 years, in this cycle called an equinox, 24,000, thus you will see that a single cycle has gone, and now we're into a quad cycle, overstand that. Then we have an epoch of 50,000 years. By that I mean the quad cycle which is this, assuming your sun and your planet is moving, it doesn't move perfectly around, it moves in an egg shaped motion and oval. It is broken up into points 1, 2, 3 and 4. There are two points where the planet is far away from the sun, called solstices, which mark the two times when the sun is seen during the day, the longest and the shortest times of the year with Sol relating to the sun. So thus you have four seasons, one winter, two spring, three summer and four fall, called the seasons or sea suns, the child of the sea, who lived here before Adam's creation. They lived beneath the sea called the deep, and watched the Elohim create and make that which was good, all determined by the water. Thus you have sea suns, sons of the sea. Hummings are also a sea people, living in an atmosphere of air, which is water. First, from water of seamen, sea men, to the sack of the womb, to the atmosphere of air, which is water and the human body, which is free force water, the four suns of water. Now, that is just the planet and its motion around the sun. But note, when we take your solar system and cause it to revolve around a larger mass, the universe, there are also four periods. The furthest periods from the sun are called the silver periods, or the silver ages. That is the moon cycle. You have two silver or moon cycles. Because of the magnetic pull that the sun has, the Earth's elliptic motion speeds up and slows down, and is elliptic, or the great annual path of the sun as seen from the Earth. Your planet is not going around and around at the same speed as you may think. 
You will see that each one of these periods, because of the number 24, has been divided into four 6,000 year cycles. The first 6,000 year period was from the first silver moon cycle, which was the first cycle that the Earth was furthest away from the Sun, to the first gold cycle, which was the first cycle that the Earth was closest to the Sun. The second 6,000 year period was from the first gold Sun to the second silver moon. The third 6,000 year period is from the second silver moon to the second gold sun and the fourth and final 6,000 year period is going to be from the second gold sun back to the beginning of the very first silver moon period from light back to the pure supreme balancement of blackness In the fourth cycle the Luciferian race made war upon the Anunnaki of the pure green light The Anunnaki Elohim triumphed over the race of Jinn as Anu had done over his brother Alelu who descended to the seventh, the blue planet inward then called Tiamat, and after his defeat Anu ascended up to the throne of Nibiru. Murdoch captured one of the jinn who was under the age of maturity, named Balas Iblis, meaning despaired or rebellious one. His other name was Lucifer, being the liberated Luciferian. Balas was educated amongst the Anunnaki, and he improved by degrees so much that he was honoured and made a teacher of the Anunnaki. You must remember that Lucifer being one of the most rare Luciferians was almost all in all polarized, meaning he had two conflicting natures, being part Anunnaki and part Reptilian. Lucifer was a product of a mixed marriage, being the son of two beings. The Reptilian Tarnish raped the Anunnaki Melita, which made Lucifer part Reptilian and part Anunnaki. This is why he is called the Serpent that spoke beside the tree in the enclosed Garden of Delight, located in what is called today Bali. Thus, there were beings who appeared to have a compromising attitude or personality. Yet it was Lucifer who appeared to be headstrong and have a disagreeable nature and an uncompromising attitude or personality. However, from his loins came Jabberians called the Giborim, the majestic or mighty ones. The strength of the Luciferians made them able to better deceive the seed of Adam by their physical human-like appearance. He Balas inspired to become the guiding light, the ruler, the sultan of all the stars of the heaven and the prince of the cherub Gareb in his heart. He sought the very throne of Anu. Anu reigned over a court of great splendor. It was a place with an artificial garden sculpted with semi-precious stones. There Anu resided with his wife and half-sister Antum, Antu, six concubines, eighty children of which fourteen were by Antum, one prime minister, three commanders in charge of the Mu rocket ships, two commanders of the weapons, two great masters of written knowledge, one minister of the Perth, two chief justices, two chief scribes, and five assistant scribes, all of which Balas wanted to rule. Balas was called Samael in short, with the vapor of the self-complacency and conceit, which is the real nature of Balas. Next, he wanted to scale the skies and try and control and rule all of the stars, the Arwayans, the angelic hosts of the heavens. Often he would incite unnecessary arguments pretending about his excellence by means of deceitful illusions and diabolical stratagems. Once, some of the company of the agreeable Lenunakai were going to have a look at the preserved tablet, the holiest of holy scriptures, upon which contained the record of the past and the future, called the Manure, the Illuminated Records or the Akasha Records. On their return, Balas perceived marks of grief on their foreheads and asked them for the cause of their grief. They replied, This day we have obtained the information from the tablet that one of the Anunnaki Garabit Cherubim, those who are near, the companions of Mikael, meaning who dares to be like El, of the mansion of the Eternal, shall soon be afflicted with rejection and everlasting damnation. Everyone is afraid for his own sake, and we request you to pray that the guardian Anunnaki may not allow any of us to fall this misfortune. We are very much terrified and dismayed. Then Balas answered them, saying, Let none of this even disturb you, for that judgment refers neither to you nor to me. I have years ago been aware of it, and have not communicated it to anyone. The pride and arrogance of Balas did not allow him to weigh the words of the Anunnaki. At that time, the blessed proclamation reached the hearing of the inhabitants. The echo of the success of Kadmon Zakar reached their ears. On hearing the news, their depression was ejaculating from them, and that permeated their being from the kindled anger of the unhallowed disagreeable doer Balas. He spoke, saying, How can mortals created of dust claim to be a being of superiority, and I am created before him of fire from the previous 
sun cycle. So the Inunakai, having guessed the event to come from the Sons of Tarnish, said to El Elo, Will you make a mischief maker in it, one who shall shed blood? This was repeated by the Kuthites on the planet Earth, by the command of Anu El Elo, by Murdoch son of Enki and Dankina the grandson of Anu, who would descend to the fourth planet advised and warned the race of Natas, who had gone astray from the straight path. This took place before the physical war was waged with them, it was a mental war. The agreeable Anunnaki were victorious. This, however, would not be the last time that the forces of the benevolent, agreeable and disagreeable malevolent would do battle.